Hello, this is the 4.4 to 4.6 quiz key. So question number one, which of the following describes the changes in forces of attraction that occur as H2O changes phase from a liquid to a vapor? All right, so it's changing from a liquid to a gas. So um, when you have phase changes, it's a, it's a physical change. So it's intermolecular forces that are gonna be broken. So um, the other four are talking about intramolecular, covalent and ionic. So it's only the, the B, the hydrogen bonds, the intermolecular force between water molecules, those are the ones that are broken. Okay, question number two. Okay, we have that balanced equation. So when a student adds 30 milliliters of one molar HCl to 0.56 grams of powdered Fe, <clears throat> a reaction occurs according to the equation above. When the reaction is complete, uh, at 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere, which of the following is true? Okay, so with this one, there's a lot of different possibilities, so you kind of have to work through all of them. So I have, uh, I have the work over here. Okay, here's the, here's the reaction for number two. Okay, so here's that, here's that balanced equation copied over. Okay, so here's the information that was given, all right? So with the iron, the, the molar mass is, is about 56. So when you divide that out, you end up with 0 0.010 moles. With the HCl, uh, that's a solution. So we wanna convert this into liters. And with the molarity of one, um, we end up with 0 0.030 moles. So it'd be 0 0.0 three zero liters times one molar it gets us our number of moles right here okay so that's our number of moles for those two reactants um, now comparing that to the mole ratio it's a two to one mole ratio so the 0 0.01 moles of iron would need 0 0.02 moles of H HCl so that means your iron is your limiting reactant and that, that also means that 0 0.020 moles of this HCl is used up. So going back to our choices, that really eliminates um, A and B because we would have 0 0.01 moles of HCl left over after that, that guy used up. So A and B are incorrect. It has the right um, reactant in excess, but not the, not the correct remainder. Okay. All right. Then the, the next choice, letter C, um, if this is our limiting reactant, <clears throat> um, that's going to determine how much product we get. And everything between Fe and our products is a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to get 0 0.010 moles of each of our products. So again, going back to our choice, uh, that eliminates letter C because we would get 0 0.010 moles of FeCl produced, not 0 0.015. So the answer has to be D, but let's confirm that. <clears throat> so this is how much HCl gets produced. And since um, it, it talks about STP conditions, 273 Kelvin and, and one atmosphere, we can convert it to liters using this uh, molar volume, 22.4. So we just multiply those together and you end up with 0.22, uh, which is your answer for letter D. So that's the correct one. Okay, next. All right, so here's our balanced equation. So we have a sample of CH3OH. It's placed in a previously evacuated vessel with a pressure of P1. So it doesn't give us a number. It just tells us we have P1 to start off with at 600 Kelvin. What is the final pressure in the vessel after the reaction is complete and the contents of the vessel are returned to 600 Kelvin? Okay, now with this, we, we also have to know a little bit about uh, gas laws, okay? So the temperature is staying the same, but we have to say, well, what's happening to the pressure? Well, during this reaction, we start off with um, one of these, and you're going to convert three of those. If you look at mole ratios, so one mole of the CH3OH would produce one mole of CO and two moles of H2. So if we're, if we're producing three times the amount of gas, that means the pressure is going to go up three times of its original amount. So we're going to end up with 3P1. So the answer is letter D. Okay, question four. We have a two mole sample of F2. It reacts with excess NaOH. So F2 is our limiting reactant. 
According to the equation above, if the reaction is repeated with excess NaOH but with one mole of F2, which of the following is correct? So we still have excess NaOH, but now we're taking two moles of F2 and you're cutting it down to one mole. So you have half of your limiting reactant, so you should end up getting half of each product that's produced. So we can look at our choices here. Uh, I'd be letter B. OF2 produced is halved. The rest of them talk about doubling or remaining the same. This is the only one that, that cuts the amount of product in half. Okay, question five. We have 0.4 moles of H2 and 0.15 moles of O2 were to react as completely as possible to produce H2O. What mass of H2O would remain? Okay, going back to the worksheet here. Scroll down to this one. So it doesn't give us a balanced equation, but we can we can figure it out. We know H2 and O2 are the reactants, and we're producing H2O. So then you just balance it with a 2 here and a 2 there. All right? So you do have to have the balanced equation to, to be able to get this one done. This is the given moles of each. So the 0.15 moles of O2 would need 0.3 moles of H2. So you have excess H2, and O2 is your limiting reactant. Okay? O2 is going to run out first. So then according to this, you have 0.3 moles of this H2 are used up in the reaction. So that means 0.1 moles is left over. Multiply that by the molar mass, you end up with 0.2 grams of H2 remaining. So we'll go back to our choices. It's going to be letter A. <coughs> letter A. Okay, number six. Okay, another limiting reactant problem. We have 8 grams of N2H4, 92 grams of N2O4. They're mixed together and react according to the equation above. What is the maximum amount of H2O that can be produced? So it's a limiting reactant problem because we're given amounts of each reactant. Okay, so then go to my work page again. <clears throat> Okay, here's our balanced equation. Okay, these are the amounts that are given. Okay, now they're, they're giving you amounts that are relatively easy to work with. Um, you, you can just do the mental math. It says um, the molar mass of this was 32, so 8 divided by 32, that's a fourth or 0.25. <clears throat> and N2O4 has a molar mass of 92, so just 92 divided by 92 gives you one mole. Okay, now according to the mole ratio, if you have one mole of this N2O4, you would need two moles of this N2H4. That means that this is your limiting reactant. So then to figure out the amount of product that we need, that we, that we should expect to get, I should say, you start with your limiting reactant, multiply by the mole ratio, then multiply by the molar mass. And again, these are, these are numbers that you should, you know, you don't want to have to use a calculator. So you got 0.25, you multiply it by 2, it ends up being a half, 0.5. Multiply that by 18, so half of 18 is just 9 grams. So you go back to our choices, letter A, that's 9 grams. <clears throat> okay, question 7. According to the reaction represented above, about how many grams of aluminum uh, with atomic mass 27 are necessary to produce 0.5 moles of hydrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere? Okay, so um, this is just a stoichiometry problem. It's not going to be a limiting reactant. We're, just, we're given an amount of product, and we're saying, well, how much of this reactant do we need to get there? So here's the work. Here's our balanced equation. We just have 0.5 moles of H2. We want to figure out grams of aluminum. So we start off with our given amount of moles, go through a mole ratio, and multiply by 27 um, and then we end up with 9 okay again sometimes they give you numbers that are, are easy to work with or easier to work with without a calculator so working this kind of backwards with the numbers you have 27 divided by 3 that's 9 double that that's 18 half of that is 9 okay so mental math is something that we want to kind of practice with because on the AP test, you don't get to use the a calculator on the, the multiple choice. <clears throat> okay, going to number eight. Okay, so this one's tough 
because we we haven't done a titration we just talked about it okay so with this you're, you're pipetting the the hydrochloric acid into the Erlenmeyer flask and then you you titrate it or you use sodium hydroxide as the titrant that's in the burette until you get the the color change with the indicator now the problem is that this first sample is significantly lower than the rest of the samples so there had to be something that would reduce the amount of hydrochloric acid that was transferred to the Erlenmeyer flask so the the choice is going to be uh, letter D the pipette was not rinsed with the HCl solution the the pipette was used to deliver the HCl to the Erlenmeyer flask well there might have been something in there like maybe distilled water or maybe something that reacted with the HCl that reduced the amount of HCl that was put into that first sample so it's gonna be letter D Okay, and that's all for the, the quiz. Have a good day.